Well, welcome to another three-point edit tutorial. This time we're looking at the electricity effect of Develop for Blender super, super fast because I don't like rendering with high samples. These live uh, interactive electrical emitters uh, give you a nice discharge effect over surfaces of objects. Anyway, enough of the pretty pictures. Let's get on with the tutorial. To arrive at our single emitter, I've started out with a default cube. If I tab shift Z into render mode for cycles and scale up, you can see that it's a hair particle. But when your base scale uh, enlarges quite a lot, you do tend to see a lot of artifacts from uh, distortion of the hair strand. So if we scale that back down again, you can see that it becomes quite fine, the structure, but the length remains the same. And you don't tend to see the uh, artifacts from the hair. Let's begin by creating a simple cube. Center that with Alt-G. Not that it needs centering. Let's move it across to our field of view. And let's apply a particle simulation. So we go over to our Properties tab for the object, clicked on Particles. We're going to create a new particle and we're going to change it to hair. As you can see, we're creating quite a lot of hair. Now, ordinarily in Blender, this is a good thing. It's quite distorted, this hair, because there are some force fields overriding it at the moment. Let's reduce the amount of hairs because our electrical discharge is really only going to take up one or two hairs. You can see them here. I hope. They're very, very fine, difficult to see. What we want to do is modify the way the hairs actually appear in Cycle's render engine. If I press Shift Z now, they are not doing anything except reflecting the light around them, which is not very much. So let's create a new material for our object, and the hair particles will inherit this material. Let's change this material by the object material editor and we'll make that an emission. Let's make it a nice light blue. Dial up the strength a little bit. Let's scale down the size of the object. Scale, scale, scale. What you'll notice is that the hair seems to be changing size, but when you finish scaling, it returns to its original length. I don't like where the hair is being emitted from, so let's turn on advanced hair and volume emission so that it just comes from somewhere in the center of the object. Now you'll notice the electrical discharge seems to be in large segments. If we scroll down, we can see display and the steps it uses to render this is quite low. Let's turn that up to 6 or 7. And our render type can go up to 6 or 7. Because we are using very few hairs, it should not tax the system very much at all. Now the problem is you may not be able to see the hair very well or the electrical discharge. What could we do about that? Well, we can scroll down to the very bottom of our particle properties and look for cycles hair settings. Let's try increasing all these to 0.5 for size, root thickness to 0.5, tip to 0.5, and scaling 0.5. Now you can see it's quite large, but it's uniform all the way along. Now if we change the root thickness or the tip thickness, you can balance how much uh, the line takes up of those different values by altering the shape. So let's try that, changing root and making it larger, and tip, making it smaller, and now you can see that it starts fat and gets much thinner towards its end. We change the scaling 
you can get an overall uh, reduction in total value of the size of the of the hair render. But if you want it to be larger at the other end and smaller at the root end, you just invert the values. The problem is there's no center mass that you can change. And if you change the size of the emitter object, that will affect the size of the root. You can see as I make it smaller, the root actually gets smaller. If I make it much larger, the root also gets larger. But I don't really need to see the emitter. I could hide that in another object or on the surface of another object, or I could use a plane. If you notice, I have some fields already active. And one of them is a texture field. And the texture that I'm using at the moment is a Blender original field. All just standard as it comes out of the box, size 0.25, distortion 1. If I want to animate the movement of the electricity over time, I can simply move or animate my field. So it gives some variety. So if I press the I key, give it some rotation, change my view down here to the graph editor, Oops. select my field, make sure I'm in F curve mode, go to my rotation, let's see, I could just animate with a modifier my X rotation to be a cycle. So if we move along, give it another keyframe on the current channel, G to move that, whoops, select the one keyframe I want, G and Y to move it up, and you can see that it's now animating in a repeated fashion over time. Could make that larger. To slow it down, I move it across. Or move it closer together to make the electricity become more rapid, make it vert more vertical to give it more change over time and I can still move my object. Now you'll notice that the object is also being, the hair is being attracted to the surface of these letters. So as I move them around, they are being attracted to this surface. So these letters also have a field turned on. You can see that by these circles. So if we look at them, they are a simple force, but they are a negative value, so they are an attractive force. You can certainly give your electricity more um, hair emission, but they tend to just bundle up into one place because of the amount of field strength. If you uh, apply another field around the emitter cube, you can actually uh, get the hairs to bundle together before splitting further down and forking and becoming more like uh, lightning. But I've had more success by running lower values of hair and multiplying the emitters instead. Briefly, I should mention that the, uh, the speed that I'm getting from the cycles display uh, for this text is also based on its material. So if I just go back to the node editor, the material I'm using here is based off a um, texture coordinate of its reflection pass. Going through a color ramp, so that I can get a black and white value out the other side instead of a coloured value. If I just turn that off, it looks like that. And then that is being pumped through to an emission shader, and that is being mixed with a glossy surface so that I can get some of that reflection happening around here from the lightning or from the electricity. So anything I do with my uh, font is uh, kept track of with the the material, it's quite a nice surface for motion graphics text. The other thing is that if you move your electricity too far away from a surface, it just sort of stretches out and reaches out in space. You could apply a driver to the hair length. So if we go uh, to add a driver, manually create a driver, then we can do something like this. Go back to our graph editor, to our drivers, look for the particle settings, Go to hair length, go up to driver tab, 
and we're looking for a different kind of driver, so it's going to be a distance between our source object, cube 1 in this case, and say the text. So this only works as I'm pointing towards one lot of text. And then that will give me an, a difference, and you can see the value appearing down here. So if I type in the variable name, which is VAR here, and I put it in at my scripted expression, VAR. Now, every time I move and release uh, my object to update it, it will change the length of the hair so that it reaches out to that object. So no matter how far away from the object I get, the hair will reach out to it. Just bear in mind that the distance between the objects is from the object's origin point. So in the case of that text, the origin point is down here. So this is really the distance between that origin point and this um, cube. So it's not necessarily the face distance. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief sojourn into the world of electricity and high voltage in Blender. I haven't uh, tried this in 2.8. I am currently using 2.79. Uh, and uh, maybe something similar should work in uh, 2.8. Uh, thanks very much for watching.